Hi everyone, my name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I'm a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream live on Twitch on Mondays and Tuesdays at 5pm Pacific Time in the United States, which is 10am if you're in Australia or 1am if you're in the UK. I hope you guys and girls are well, it's good to see you all. Uh, do remember if you miss the live streams, you can catch up at any time by clicking the videos tab at the top of my Twitch page. Um, we're going to be working on the House in the Hollow study, the House in the Hollow game. We're working on the study for that game. Um, if you do want to wishlist the game, you can type exclamation Steam in Twitch chat or click the graphic in my panels below my stream. Euro, it's good to see you, and Smurfberry and Sniper Echo. Good to see you guys. And yes, no, my eye is all good now, thanks Euro. I had the pink eye. <laughs> I, I had an ear infection, which then gave me an eye infection. Um, I actually had two ear infections. I didn't, men didn't bring that up last time I told you guys, but I had two ear infections and that gave me an eye infection, but it's all good now. All good. I hope you guys are all well. Uh, do remember too, guys and girls, if you're watching, if you've got any questions while I'm working, please feel free to pop into chat and ask me. You won't be interrupting me or bothering me. Unlike some streamers, I like talking to you guys. Uh, that's the whole reason I'm on Twitch, so feel free to ask me anything uh, even if it's just to say hello it's always welcome but if you all you want to do is watch then that's completely fine <laughs> that's right smith very the pink eye ooh. but it was it was by caused by my ear infections that that moved to my eye and it was incredibly painful too i have to tell you it was really painful phil likes talking that's right it's, it's Phil does chat. Just Phil just chat. What, what, is, what does Sniper Girl say? Phil does just chat. I think that's what she calls it. <sighs> Smurfery says, uh, yeah, I, and I do like short talking. So, uh, Smurfery says, biology is the most disgusting thing it is. I agree. Sniper Echo says, can barely get a word out of him. No, that's right. I, you know, I'm such a such a church mouse. I never open. I, I never like to talk. I'm one of those, you know, people that cows in a corner and says nothing all day long <laughs> right <laughs> sniper says especially if someone uses that 20 minutes silent option oh god don't do that i've actually upped the um the points rewards for that so you've got to spend a few points if you want to silence me for five minutes it's not 20 minutes it's five minutes <laughs> oh no don't do it don't do it dude don't do it don't do it you know how hard it is for me to not talk even just for five minutes <laughs> Alrighty. You got them, I'm sure you have got them points, Sniper Echo, considering you were one of my very first viewers when I first started on Twitch years ago. But we were talking about yesterday, I can't believe I must have been streaming, I must be streaming for like three years now on Twitch. Where does the time go? Three years of my life have gone by and I, in the blink of an eye. <laughs> Sniper says, I got them points in spades, I'm here in stream for over four years, it's been four years! Man, man, I feel old. You're watching Phil Grow Old live on Twitch. <laughs> Jeez. Can't be four years. Can't be. Can't be that. 17, 18, 19. No, it's, it's about three and a half years, I think. Probably three and a half years, yeah. Because so I think I started in 2017. Like three and a half, yeah. So that's where he says. Three and a half years. Where's three and a half years gone? I told you guys the older you get, the quicker it goes. You started in, I sort of, I did start in 2016. That's true, but it was right at the end of 2016. And I don't class anything before 2017 as a proper stream because I really would, <laughs> it was all new to me then. So we ignore the 2016 and we start from 2017. That's when it really started. Sniper says, no, I don't think it is. Legmog, it's good to see you, buddy. How are you? How are you holding up, Legmog? And with your social distancing, and you are doing it, aren't you? You're being good, and you're washing your hands. You're not touching your face, and you're staying socially distant. Might be hard with that new girlfriend of yours that you were talking about last time. But it's good to see you, Legmog. Sniper says, although I feel okay with rounding it up. Euro <laughs> uh, says to Sniper, click on your own name, and it will show when you followed. Well, if you click on Sniper, he was one of my very, very first followers. Very, very first. Sniper has been with me, and Smokeberry actually as well. Smokeberry has been with me, and legmog has been one of my viewers for a, a long time as well. 
Uh, Leglog says, wow, I followed in February 2017. So I was there nearest, so you were there at the start. You were, we're, we're considering the beginning of 2017 as, as the start, even though I started in 2016. We're not counting 2016 because, you know, I wasn't, I was still finding my, my uh, streaming legs back then. Now I'm an old hand. Snuck says, sorry, my net died earlier today. Oh no. <laughs> Legmog says, I'm being very responsible with social distancing. All dates are now virtual dates. Well, that's good to hear. They did make an exception in Australia where I stream from. Uh, if you have a partner, like a girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, that even though we're in social in stage three lockdown where I live, which means you can't go out unless you're going out for the doctor, for food, because you need to for work, those sort of things, is meant to stay at home. But they made an exception for our boyfriends and girlfriends to visit each other, which I thought was nice. I don't know what it's like in the UK though. Everyone's different around the world. Virtual dates, that'd be hard though, Leg Mob. March 2017 for Euro as well. Oh, Euro, you have been a follower of mine for a very long time. I keep forgetting all you guys. You're all old hands. You're all old, old fildos. You've been watching me since the beginning, which is great. I love you guys. And I do appreciate the fact that you tune in to watch me. You watch this, you know, this guy crap on all day motor mouth bill sniper says i was following you on youtube before were you really were you stalking me on youtube sniper okay <laughs> i have had my youtube account for a very long time 10 years or so um leg mug says okay so if we are not counting 20 no we're not counting 2016 leg mug that's 2016 was training legs time and we're not counting that part of my streaming career. <laughs> uh, and Sniper followed in 2016. Can we then discount Sniper's follow history and say I followed? No, I'm, just, I'm afraid not. Sniper gets the gets the gold star for the very first follow. He pre-followed me. We'll, we'll call, say that. Uh, Sniper says, old, did he just do that oldest thing again? <laughs> oh dear. Legmog, did I miss much today after? Did you stream today, Legmog? Uh, Legmog is a streamer as well, who does stream on Twitch. You guys and girls should follow his channel. I'm just not sure how often you still stream. Legmog, I don't know. <laughs> but do follow him anyway. He has a Twitch channel, Legmog. I think Euro, do you stream as well? If Euro is a streamer, you should follow him as well. Uh, Euro says, pre-follow, that's an internet talk for stalking. <laughs> Sniper says, uh, pre-followed, it's okay to say stalked, I'm okay with that, okay. Well, Sniper Echo's a stalker, and he pre-followed me in 2016, before my, I, I officially started streaming in 2017, let's say that. Um, so what are we working on? We're working on a gramophone for the study. Yesterday we did the cigar box, we started doing the UV mapping for the gramophone, and we're going to continue doing that today. Uh, Yuri says, yeah, it's been known, mostly game stuff at the moment since my time since by time I get done with real work I'm uh, CBA doing more <laughs> so there you go follow Euro if you want to you know chill out and watch somebody gaming follow Legmog if you want to watch somebody working on 3D stuff and because Legmog is working on a pilot series pilot episode for a series called Bright Spark and he uses Cinema 4D I use 3D Studio Max um, Legmog says, yes, Sniper, I gave the most in-depth analysis of uh, Turbulence FD, the likes of which will never be seen again. If you missed it, all the profound knowledge is gone now. <laughs> and then Legmog says, you literally missed nothing. I'm sure that's not true, Legmog. And Legmog's very talented as well. You guys really should check him out. Sniper says to Legmog, but your nothing is usually a crap load of useful stuff. That's right, I'm sure it is. Legmog's a talented guy and tune into his channel. There you go. If you were watching him today, you would have heard about Turbulence FD. Phil's a bit more boring than that, and Phil's going to be doing modeling in Max and uh, UV mapping in Rhizome and texturing in Substance Painter. Uh, once we have all of the assets created and textured up for the study, then we're going to jump into the Unreal Engine 4.24. Yes, that's right, isn't it? Uh, to actually start setting the study up. Now, I'm working on the game that you can wishlist now on Steam. So if you don't want spoilers for the game, 
When I start working in the editor, you probably should not be watching the stream because you may see me creating stuff that might spoil the game for you. So if you're, oh, look, I'm doing my best not to have too many spoilers and while I'm working. Um, but there may be the occasional time when you see me creating or making something in the engine for the game that might be a bit of a spoiler. So just be aware of that, okay? But I'll do my best not to spoil things. Legmog says, well, I will for sure be streaming more this week. Well, there you go. Follow Legmog's channel. How is the um, Bright Spark series thing going, Legmog? Is it going good? Or you've sp been spending all your time doing virtual webcams with your new girlfriend? I hope that's going well as well. Uh, Legmog says, yes, you might get the same, the game spoiled, like how the bird is in the main play, <laughs> it's the main playable character. There is no bird in the game. I'm sorry to tell you, the eagle has died. If you were watching my channel uh, when I was doing the cinematic using Unreal Engine 4, uh, that eagle at the beginning, I'm afraid the eagle died. Couldn't be helped. I tried, I tried to revive the eagle, but the eagle died. And I was so distraught over the eagle dying, I decided that I would not create any more birds for the game as a tribute to the eagle. Maybe I should put a little gravestone somewhere in the game. That'd be funny. A little gravestone somewhere in the game. It says uh, the eagle died here. Bugger all. So not you guys. <laughs> I'm talking to my password manager. Uh, Sniper says, you heard it here, guys. We may have a kitchen in stream. <laughs> Spoiler alert, there is no kitchen in the game at the moment, but there will be one eventually. There's a bathroom now and there's a bedroom now, so you've got somewhere to, to clean yourself and to wash and you've got somewhere to sleep now. That's improved, that, that's progress, that's progress. Oh, kitchen indeed, you're going to get a Phil slap, Sniper Echo. Um, Sniper says, Phil, what software would you, what, so, what software what would you use if you didn't have Ryzen UV? I would use Max. If I didn't use Ryzen UV to do my UV mapping, it depends. If I didn't, if I wasn't using Ryzen, I'd probably use Max's built-in UV map tools. Unless I was working with, yeah, Substance Painter. If you're doing stuff in Substance Painter, because that can UV map automatically now for you, and it doesn't do a bad job. I mean, it doesn't do a great job. It doesn't do a bad job. Um, so I'd either probably, yeah, I'd, I'd give Substance Painter's automatic unwrapping tools a go and see what, what it does, um, at least as a starting point. And then I'd, exp I, if, if I liked the way Substance Painter unwrapped it, but there was a couple of things I'd like to change, I'd save the model back out. I don't know, can you save the model out of Substance Painter? I'm not sure. Yeah, I, yeah, I'd save the model back out and then I'd load it back into the 3D program, make my adjustments to the UV map and then uh, just uh, load the project up again with the with the changes made. Maybe that. But yeah, generally Max's UV tools aren't bad. Most 3D software's UV tools aren't bad. They're just not as good as Ryzen's for automated stuff. Euro says 3D Studio Max because it's king. That's right, Euro and I are Max per people. Legmog says uh, bad news. It all fell apart with that girl. Long, st long story short, she wanted a lot of online communication. I felt I was messaging her a lot. Lot, lot is in capitals here for anyone that can't see the chat or for people watching back on YouTube. Uh, but it still wasn't enough for her, so we agreed to part ways. Oh. You're picky, Legmog. I've, I've come to the conclusion that you're one of these really picky people. The slightest thing that you, you spot that you don't like and yeah, I don't know, Legmog. Anyway, that's fair enough, I guess. I mean, it just means she liked you and she wanted to talk to you all the time. There's no harm in that. Um, it depends on how much free time you've got, of course, to talk to people. Sniper says, Euro, you know I've, you, I've used uh, Max but a bit, but never actually looked into the UV tools. Yeah, no, the UV tools of Max are pretty good. They are pretty good. Um, I, if I wasn't using Ryzen, I'd probably just stick to Max's UV tools. Because there's all these free scripts you can download for Max as well if you want to improve your UV if you want to improve the way that Max's UV tools are laid out. So there's a lot of options with Max for UV. Sniper says, I swear I can't, well, I can't word English anymore. <laughs> I speak real good too, so I can relate. Uh, Euro says, I use, 
I use built in and a few plugin scripts to make repetitive stuff. Yeah, no, there are a lot of really good scripts for Max. It's one of the reasons Max is so popular. Uh, a couple of reasons. One is the modifier stack, you know, this thing over here. Um, and the other is all of the scripts and stuff that you can download and use for free. Because even I have created a plugin for Max and given it away for free. Uh, back back in the, a couple of years ago, a few years ago now. So there's heaps of free stuff for Max. A lot of stuff you got to pay for too, don't get me wrong, but heaps of free stuff. Uh, Legmog says, uh, not to worry, Sniper, I'm... A, I'm... You guys in your English and your typing. Uh, I'm... This is, I'll read it as he's written it. I uh, am no... I uh, am longer, not English, better speaking at. <laughs> oh, man. Sniper says, I remember always thinking the Max tools were really good compared to Blender from what I saw on streams. Again, I've not used Blender, but Blender is a free software, so you can't really compare a software like Max or Maya or Cinema 4D, which has been around, you know, since the day dot. Uh, and they've had a lot of time to sort of like work on it to so something like Blender, which is, I won't say new, but newer than the other software. So, And it's free. And the others you've got to pay for, so... But do remember, if you do want to use Max or Maya, I believe still, you can get a free three, one year now, one year, get it right. Uh, they used to be three year license for free if you uh, if you had a student email address. Now that now it's one year. Uh, this year, Autodesk changed it, the educational licensing to one year, which isn't too bad because generally they, they put out a new version of the software every year anyway, and you can renew your, your, um, your serial number provided you're still a student, so. Just means you got to do it every year now instead of every three. So keep that in mind. And there's also the um, the indie license for Max, which Autodesk are expanding. It was only in the United States, in New Zealand, and Australia, I believe. Maybe the UK. I'm not sure that you could buy an indie license, but Autodesk are extending that out now to a lot of other countries, and that's two hundred and fifty dollars, I believe, US a year. So. There are options if you do want to use paid software where you don't have to spend $6,000 a year on, on a, a subscription or anything. You know. Legmog isn't pissy. Uh, Legmog isn't picky. He has standards, Sniper Echo says. Okay. Legmog says, to be honest, it was her ended with me. I was happy to still continue things, but I didn't argue against it when she said she still wanted more. She struggled with depression and anxiety. I was more than happy to try and make it work. But if she ever felt like she wasn't getting enough communication, that was a huge trigger for her. And man, I communicated with her as much as I possibly could. An insane amount, he's got in brackets. Uh, but she always got angry at the slightest hint of me not being attentive. Mm, that's a difficult one. If she, um, if she suffered from depression and anxiety, which is terrible for her. And I guess not much fun for you either. Uh, Legmog says, it got so bad I worked out the math of how much I communicated with her, but you shouldn't be doing stuff like that. Versus all my other friends. Um, in two weeks, I messaged every other friend like 100 times, but I messaged her almost 900 times, but she still felt like it was not enough. Man, that's a lot of messaging. 900 messages in a week? Two weeks. That's still a lot of, that's like, 450 messages a week? Jeez. Jeez. <laughs> Sniper Echo says, by the way, another streamer friend of mine might be in later. Hellforge is the name. Well, let's keep an eye out for Hellforge and see if uh, if they pop in. Really cool guy. Well, we'll look forward to seeing if Hell Hellforge pops in. Uh, Euro says, yeah, $250 is uh, 20 USD a month. That's cheap for an indie. And EDU is free for people in education. That's exactly right. Sniper says, uh, Legmog, I call horse crap on that Legmog. Your friend here didn't get one message from you. I <laughs> just say, well, there you go. You've been ignoring Sniper Echo and he's not happy. He expects 900 messages now from you. Um, okay, so where will you be mapping this up? We got about three quarters of the way through and we're going to finish it off today and then we're going to jump into Substance Painter and texture it up. So, we did that. Let's do this bit. 
Now I am going to be using Rhizom to do the uh, UV mapping. So let's send it to Rhizom. Okay, let's see here. Um, Galen, it's good to see you, Galen. How are you? Uh, Galen says, uh, from bed with my puppy. Oh, you got a picture of the puppy? Have you shown us a picture of the puppy before? Or is this a new puppy? It's good to see you, Galen. I hope you're well. I hope your health was holding up and you're doing well because Galen had some health issues uh, he was talking about a few weeks ago. But it's good to see you, buddy. Uh, Legmark says, yeah, to be honest, it started feeling more, to me, more like, uh, oh God, I better, better message her because she'll get mad if I don't. And you don't want to be like that. Uh, rather than message her because I wanted to. Always felt like I was on countdown to the doghouse, which is never a good thing. No, it's not. Look, you don't want to be in a relationship that you're not happy in regardless of whether it's you or they're not happy because that's not healthy for anyone so you did the right thing if that's the case it wouldn't have been good for her either not not just not good for you but not good for her smeppery says doggo legmog says the sniper well working out my average daily messages most of my friends got 0.4 messages per day she got 60. So please do private message me, just don't hold your breath for me to respond soon. <laughs> well, unlike Legmark, if anyone wants to message me on Twitch, I do check my messages. You can also contact me on the Discord server, the Pill Dust Treaty Discord. Um, you can join that server too by clicking the graphic in my panels below my stream. Man, I feel like um, all I'm doing is promoting my own crap. <laughs> i got to tell you guys about it because, if, you know, if I don't, then, you know, you won't know. You guys are the regulars know, but other people might not. Uh, Sniper says to Legmog, all jokes aside, that sounds pretty tough position to be in. Yeah, it does. And like I said, if neither of you are happy, then um, you shouldn't be in a relationship with anyone that you know where you're not happy because it's just not healthy. Not healthy at all. You, 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 you are really going to... The shape of this thing is really weird. I may have to um, split it up a bit in Max if we can't get it to do a proper runner out. Oh, that's okay. We can, we can do it. We're having a bit of an issue just here with a little bit of stretching. That's that red triangle. But it's generally not too bad. Let's see if we can do it without splitting it in max. I'm just going to isolate that piece. Bounce egg. Bounce an egg. Bounce an egg. <laughs> Hello, bounce an egg. It's good to see you. How you doing? You're holding in there with the social isolation. Um, like Galen says two. Pup pics posted to oh he did post the pictures let's have a look at like uh, uh, Galen's puppies we're just going to stop doing some 3D work for a, uh, for a minute while I look at Galen's puppies yes I'm probably going to lose a lot of viewers but <laughs> it won't be long I promise we'll be back to 3D in two seconds um, I just want to check out these puppies because everybody likes puppies I'm actually a cat person personally but puppies are good too. Uh, and just if, for anyone that doesn't know, if you want to go to phildoes3d.com, my, so my Twitch username put a .com on the end, that's my website and it has links to my social media and stuff down the bottom, my gallery and all that sort of thing. Just for those people that, um, oh, that want to, that don't know who I am, want to know more about me. Although I don't know why, why would anyone want to know more about me? Oh, it's so cute. Oh, the kitty cat. I love the kitty cat. The kitty cat look, does not look impressed here. <laughs> the dog is very cute, though. Very, very cute. It's going to zoom in here a bit. So cute. They're both cute. And look, the colours match as well. Black and white. Well, he's a little bit more brown, but... Um, are they boys or girls, um, Galen? And this is a close-up of the puppy. So cute.
Uh, Leg Mug says, yeah, I didn't want to ride her orc just because she had depression and anxiety, just as I wouldn't ride up anyone, just because they're in a wheelchair, for example. But man, I just could not communicate with her more than I was, and such levels were a struggle for me to maintain. But for her, feeling like she wasn't getting enough communication was a deal breaker. Well, that's fair enough. At least you both the pup, you know, broke up amicably. There was no fighting, no screaming, no yelling. That's the important thing. Bounce and Egg says, yep, living in the trenches. We all are Bounce and Egg. We're all on lockdown. We all feel your pain. Um, Legmog says, if anything, stopping 3D art to view puppies will increase viewers. <laughs> Particularly when the puppies are this cute. They're so cute. And the kitty cat's really cute too. I like the kitty cat. Because I'm, I'm actually more of a cat person, as you know. You guys know. Hellforge TV. Thank you, Hellforge, for the follow. I do appreciate it. Welcome to Phil Does 3D. If you ever have any questions, Hellforge, feel free to ask. <laughs> and welcome to Phil Does 3D. Knew the person that um, Sniper was talking about? Let me just jump back here through my chat. I think you are, but I'm going to double check. Yes, you are. Sniper did um, mention that you were going to pop into the stream. It's a, it is a 3D stream. We're just looking at um, Galen's puppies, puppy and cat at the moment because I like animals. And thank you for the follow, Hellforge, as well. I do appreciate it when you guys and girls follow me on Twitch. Uh, let me catch up with my chat now. Lake Mog says, uh, Galen, been missing your streams, man. Yeah, I have too, Galen. Galen's a streamer as well. Now, Lake Mog streams, so you guys should follow his channel. Uh, Euro stream is streaming gaming at the moment, so you should follow Euro. And um, Galen also is a streamer, so follow Galen's channel if you want. I mean, they're all cool guys, so you should follow them. They're all very nice, so. And they're very talented. That's what it's all about on Twitch is, you know, a variety of different people that you can watch stream. Uh, Bounce and Egg says, it's your dog's copyright. It's your dog's copycat. <laughs> they are, they look, the colours are the same. They're a matching set. Chiotara, it's good to see you, Chiotara. And uh, Galen says the cat thinks he's a dog. <laughs> uh, nothing wrong with that. But they're very cute. Thanks for popping them. The, the images into the Discord server. Uh, just as a reminder again, guys, if you haven't joined the Phil Does 3D Discord server, you should if, if you want it's a uh, only i just want to point out that only subs can post uh links in twitch chat on my channel but everyone can post links on my discord server and there's a gallery section where you can show off the work you're working on there's a folios and demo reel section where you can put links to your art station or your your demo reel and all that sort of stuff um there's a tutorial and tips section which the guys and girls who are users of the channel have come across over the years so it's full of really useful and interesting information if you're doing art or 3D work in particular. So something for everyone on the Discord server. Um, let me catch up with my chat. I'm not. I'm a bit slow with my chat sometimes. Um, Balder is the pup and Flocky is the cat. Both boys, Galen says. Okay, so both boys. Flocky and Balder. Balder. Legmog says, so yeah, coming out of it, if I could travel back in time and do it over again, I wouldn't do anything differently, so my conscience is clear and the whole thing. Good to hear then. Hellforge, good morning to you as well. Sniper says, hi. Bouncing Egg says, hi. <laughs> and uh, he says, yes, uh, Hellforge says, Sniper recommended me to your stream. Well, normally I do do 3D. I've just, well, they will disagree with you. They, they say Phil does just chat, but that's not true. I do do 3D work. Uh, <laughs> I try anyway. And welcome Hellforge. Galen says to Hellforge is another great Blender artist. Oh, you use Blender Hellforge. Cool. Galen uses Blender as well. I use 3D Studio Max. So there you go, guys and girls. Follow Hellforge. I'm assuming you're a streamer, Hellforge TV. Follow Hellforge as well. Uh, Sniper says, Phil, you should check out his stream sometime. He's doing some pretty cool stuff all the time. I will check him out. I will check your channel out, Hellforge. And you guys and girls should uh, check out his stream as well. I trust Sniper Echo. He's been one of my viewers for a long time. And if he says it's good, it's good. Even though I haven't seen Hellforge's stream. 
Galen says, been watching him for a long time. Well, there you go. Galen, da- Ga- Galen says, and Sniper says, it's good, so check him out. Hellforge says, hi to Galen, been a while. Uh, Sniper says to Galen, you actually sent me Hellforge's channel way back. Um, Euro says, might do some personal 3D stuff soon. Working is Work is quietening down for a bit, which is nice, because I haven't had time for my own stuff for a while. Fair enough. I mean, it can be nice to play a game and not have to stream. I mean, you know, that's that's cool. Just not sure how we, this one is going to go with its unwrap. Chiwatara, and it's good to see you, Chiwatara, as well. It says, I probably need another channel. Phil does more chat. <laughs> That's right, Chiwatara. You know me too well. You guys know me too well. Okay. Just trying to... What I might do... Let me see what it's done here. Um, because the inter- interior here I don't think is really ever going to be seen very much. We might do a split down the middle to try and just to fix that um, stretching we've got going on. Let's see how we go. Again, we've got a little bit here. We could split it again. Hmm. Oh, and he's posted another pic. i got to show it. You know i got to show it. I actually forgot to show Android Lust's work as well because he's done some really cool... Android Lust does um, character work, stylized character work. He posts a lot of the images on the Discord server, and I wanted to show one of his images yesterday, and I forgot. Uh, I will show it today, so t- someone remind me if I forget, please. Because um, he's done some really cool work, and I did forget yesterday. We're looking at puppies at the moment. Whoops, what happened here? Copy, wait, I copied the wrong thing. Uh, another puppy pick. So cute. Asleep on your shoulder. Oh. <laughs> it's you guys know. Um, I used to have a cat. I'd had it for twenty years, and she died a year and a half or so ago. I think now. We had to I actually. She had to be put down because she got really old. She was like twenty, twenty-one years old. Um. And you, you don't realise just how much um, of a comfort having a pet can be. So I'm sure your dog looks like it's he's a huge comfort to you, which is good. Um, Hellforge says, I wouldn't say it's good, it's, but it's better than starting staring at a wall on a Saturday morning. <laughs> Hellforge says, currently trying to learn the game asset pipeline, so there's a lot of figuring out UVs. Must say, uh, lockdown here. Are you in New Zealand, Chiwatara? Of course you are. Chiwatara underscore NZ. <laughs> I get you confused with Contigi because Contigi is in the US. That's that's the reason I got confused for a minute. Uh, Chiwatara says, must say, lockdown here in New Zealand has allowed me more time to work on 3D. Good to hear. Well, see, there's a silver lining in everything. Use the lockdown, guys and girls, to improve your 3D work. Or if you're not doing 3D, just to make some artwork because it's fun. Uh, that should be okay. We, we do have two cut lines. You probably you want to try and minimize the amount of um, cuts you have on a UV, but sometimes you, it just can't be helped. The only way to get it to UV correctly is to do a few more cuts. We will do the repacking in Max. We won't do it in, in uh, Ryzen. You can do it in Ryzen, but I prefer to do it in Max.
but I'm the same to Tara. We're in lockdown here too. You guys in New Zealand have done really well with your um, with your infection numbers. So you're really low. You went you went hard and fast at the beginning, and it's paid off because uh, you don't you have a really low infection rate. We do here in Australia as well, and we're not. I'm not. I'm not going to be using the C word because my videos get uploaded to YouTube, and YouTube has had, had a habit of doing nasty things to videos when people mention the C word. So we're calling it human malware. Um, and yeah, the, the the cases of human malware in New Zealand are dropping. So well done to you guys in New Zealand. Sniper Echo says Rhizome UV Virtual Spaces looks pretty neat. Have you ever used that bill? What do you think I'm using? What do you think this is? This is Rhizom UV Virtual Spaces, Sniper Echo. Where have you been? Are you being funny? Do you need a fill slap? Do you want me to give you a slap? I am using Rhizom UV Virtual Spaces. There's two versions of Ryzen. There's uh, virtual spaces and real spaces. Virtual spaces is for game stuff, like if you want to do game unwrapping for models. Real spaces is for CAD modeling. They're the same program, they're just targeted toward different uh, types of models. <laughs> I think I'm having a go. Uh, Euro says, I eat UVs as pre, as pre breakfast snack. Euro is one of those strange people who like UV mapping. Um, Sniper says, I've seen him do it live. Euro says, that's the new name for non arch -biz version, Sniper Echo. Yes. Yes, yeah, there's real spaces and virtual spaces. They're the same program, but they're targeted toward different types of models. And this is virtual spaces you see me using. So if you meant have I used real spaces, I have not. I've used virtual spaces. But they're pretty much the same. Um... Murphy says, can't move, trapped forever. <laughs> That's what it feels like, doesn't it? Friends of mine are going stir crazy, being stuck at home all the time. Uh, Euro says, whoa, 21 year old is old for cat. Yeah, it was, she was very old. And she was tiny too. She was a, uh, she never grew any bigger than about, she was only about that long. I swear to God, only about that long. All after she'd grown to an adult, she was really small. She was the runt of the litter. Uh, and she never really grew out of being the runt of the litter. She stayed small throughout her, throughout her entire life. Um, yeah, but she just got too old. She, we had, I had to have her put down, which was incredibly sad, really hard to do as well, because I'd had her for so long. So, and I still miss her, and I still sometimes think I hear her meowing. You know, sometimes I'll be sitting here working, and I could swear I hear her meow, and it's, she's, you know. She died a long time ago now, over a year ago, but I swear I can still hear it sometimes. Because she used to meow all the time, because she, she she liked being played with. She liked, you know, the hide and seek sort of game. So she used to, to go upstairs and meow all the time, so to get your attention to go and play with her. And I still swear I hear her meowing sometimes. Um, Tuatara says, yep, we we're about to head to level three, slightly less restricted, but still Cases don't seem to be uh, growing. We're in level three here where I live, but I think you guys in, went to like level four. You were more, more restricted than we are here in Australia. We're still in level three. Uh, Bouncing Egg says, the only way to stay sane is to keep yourself busy. Well, that's right, do 3D work. That'll keep you occupied. You've got no excuse. Plenty of time. Euro says 90 degrees, you will obey. <laughs> Euro says human malware is what the tech press are calling it. It's a good name for it. Kiotara says, good prime minister over here. You do have a good, you have an excellent prime minister. Jacinda Ardern, I think, is the prime minister of New Zealand and uh, she's she's wonderful. I wish we had her as, your, as our prime minister. I think she's, she's wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. From what I see from a distance, in Australia anyway. Uh, Sniper says, uh, I thought you were using the real space version. No, I'm using the virtual space version, Sniper Echo. Come on. <laughs> but they both look pretty much the same, so it's easy to confuse them. The interface is pretty much the same. Uh, Sniper says, are you making, I, oh God, you're going to, you're going to get a slap. You're just, you're just being, you're just being a smart ass for the sake of being a smart ass. You get a slap, Sniper Echo. You get a pill slap. <laughs> Anyone would think I was making a game. That's right. 
Oh, sorry, Sniper Girl, for taking so long to say hello. You know what it's like with me in the chat, Sniper Girl. This, this, this old man takes forever to catch up with his chat. It's good to see you, Sniper Girl. I hope you're doing well. Bouncing Egg, uh, Real Spaces is geared more towards scan models as far as... Yeah, scan models and also CAD models, though. That, that type of modeling. I'll put the Real Spaces version. Yeah, the, the, the models I'm working on here are not scanned. <laughs> These are not scans. Um, Tuatara says, asks, how do you find Ryzen versus 3D? I've not used 3D Coat, so I can't compare them. I've heard good things about 3D Coat, but because I, I'm one of these old guys that get stuck in their ways, uh, once I find something I like to use, I don't tend to change it very much. Uh, having said that, you guys know that part of my job at the studio is to evaluate new software that might speed up, our, speed up the pipeline. Um, so I have looked at 3D Coat, but never used it seriously, and that was many years ago. So it'd be unfair of me to try and draw a comparison now. I'd have to check it out again. But I do hear good things about 3D Coat. I hear it's a good software. Hellforge says hi to Sniper Girl. Sniper Girl says, oh my god, put a cat down. Sorry to hear that. Oh yeah, well, you know. She was old. Very old. And she was in pain. And it was selfish of me to keep her alive just because I wanted her around, you know what I mean? I, I left it to as long as I possibly could, but you could tell she was in a lot of pain. So um, I called the vet out and he came and he gave her an injection and she fell asleep and she died that way. So she was put down the most humane, painless way I could find. Uh, and it was mainly because she was in a lot of pain. But it was uh, incredibly sad. And I, even now, you, I don't know, you hear my voice cracking, but I, I really miss her. I do miss her. Because she'd been around forever. <laughs> she was like my child, because I have no kids of my own. Uh, Chiwetara says, yep, we have another week at level four. Sniper says, what happened to my house model you were making for my second life property? Well, you didn't transfer that Bitcoin to me, did you? So you don't get your house that you're going to put in second life. Uh, Galen says, uh, Baldur was only a pup that survived the rest of the litter, was still born. Oh, really? Uh, Euro says, I haven't been out further than the garden for weeks, and that was only to put the bin out. <laughs> I'm the same. Look, I haven't, I've only been out of the house to go shopping, and the, and the shopping centre is like 500 metres from where I live, so that's about as far as I've gone from home in months. Now, since we've been in lockdown here in, in, in my state, Smurfberry says, uh, is semi-AFK for a bit? Okay. <laughs> uh, Euro says, this lockdown is paradise for me. Uh, well, Cookie was saying yesterday she's such an introvert that she doesn't have any problem being in lockdown either. It's just a normal day for her. Um, Tuatara says, yep, there have been a lot of offers for Oz to adopt her. Yes, we love her over here. Send her our way. Send her to send her our way. Please, please. <laughs> Sniper Girl says, how is everyone? Um... Snappy Girl says, I see how it is, cries. I'm doing well, just got done with work, a long day. How are you? I'm doing really well, thanks for asking, Sniper Girl. Yep, I'm good, and I'm not doing any work, so come on. <laughs> Let's send this back to um, back to Max, and while I keep continued chatting, we'll work on another part of the model, because I really want to get it textured up today. <laughs> oh man, let's send, uh, let's send this bit over. I can, I can do two things, no, I can't do two things at once, obviously. Uh, it has to be an edit poly. Okay, those these two are together. I don't want that. I'm just going to temporarily detach these two pieces. It just will make it easier for the program to try and UV map these weird sort of pieces of geometry. So, okay, let's send that over. And now I can do a bit more chatting. <laughs> uh, Sniper is asking if I use Gnarled much anymore. Um, I do. I still use it occasionally. Just occasionally if I want to do, because Gnarled can do high and low baking and that sort of stuff as well. So I'll use it for that. 
or if I just need to create a uh, normal map very quickly. But Nvidia released a new plugin recently for Photoshop. So if you're a Photoshop user, actually it's an it's a, a standalone program as well. So you don't need Photoshop uh, to do your normal mapping from images. So you guys should check out the new plugin that Nvidia released a couple of weeks ago, or the new program. To, if you're doing normal mapping, but I still use Nailed occasionally for things like normal mapping as well. So yep, I still use it. Not as much as I used to, but I still do use it. It's good to have. It's still installed. It's it's still in my toolbox here, so it's always uh, probably can't see it's hidden behind me, but yep, I still do use it. Long story short. <laughs> here it says, uh, I ain't heard that name in a very long time. Sniper Echoes. Hellford says Stealth Mode. Sniper Girl says, yeah, no kidding. Yuri says, have you used it also? Yuri says, no. Chiwatara um, says, started learning 3D code over the past few weeks. How do you find it, Chiwatara? Do you like it? Hellforge says, the Sniper Girl, which one I'm working on for right now? Chiwatara uh, says, C19 has stopped, has been good for us nerdy folk. It has. Human malware has been good for all of us nerdy folk. Hellforge says, so far so good. Sniper Girl says, uh, Chiwatara says, no, we shall keep. Jacinda, she is awesome. Well, you know, if you ever do want to send her our way, we will we will have her happily in, in Australia. We love Jacinda, or at least I do. And I know a lot of a lot of the guys and girls that I talk to love her as well. Let's send that back to Max. Let's work on this piece here. Sniper girl, Euro says we need a distracted, distracted counter. I know it doesn't take much to distract me. You know what? You know what I'm like. Anyone that's watched my channel long enough knows what I'm like. It's easy and easy to distract Phil. He is easily distracted. Very, very easily distracted. And he can't do two things at once either. Uh, I'm just going to do a little bit of clean up on this. I'm going to um, stitch this here. Uh, generally, the automated tools in, in Ryzen do a pretty good job, but uh, there are a couple of places here and there that can be improved, and you can just do that by hand. Very quick and easy. That's the reason I like the software. Hellford says to Sniper Girl, I think the last time you saw it I was working on a bolt rifle, which I'm almost done with. Uh, Hellford says the one helping me. Uh, um, Euro says X -normal, is, X normal is free too and still useful, that's true. Uh, X normal is another piece of software that's free that you can use to do your normal mapping. Sniper Girl says, uh, yep, X normal still works, use it for photogrammetry assets. Uh, Euro says it's great for baking internal ambient occlusion on buildings. Sniper Girl says, you're welcome. Galen says, Squirrel. <laughs> uh, I love that movie. Love that movie. Up. The movie Up. Very funny. Now let's send this back to Max. And now I think everything is UV map pretty much except for the... Um, the actual trumpet piece on the end here, so let's send that over. Uh, let's try this one. It's going to take the program just a minute or two to, to do these pieces because they are quite... Um, It's an unusual shape mesh. Now we're getting a bit of stretching and a bit of um, squishing. Stretching is the red, squishing is the blue. But it's not terrible. Uh, considering the shape of the object, it's going to be quite difficult for the software to uh, UV map it where we don't get any stretching or squishing. Uh, and it would really depend on what, what, how we're going to texture it up as to whether this would cause a problem or not. If we were going to say put um, a pattern, like 
a, a material that had a pattern on it, then it could be a problem. We would get the pattern squishing and stretching, but we're going to be putting a metallic material on this, in which case well, you're not going to notice the um, the slight squishing and stretching. Uh, so I'm going. I'm I'm happy with the way it's undone this unwrap. Um, because we're going to be using a metal texture. If it was going to be a pattern texture, then we'd have to try and do something else. <laughs> yeah, Sniper says to Euro, yeah, I remember you were talking about that before. That was a good tip. Euro says, I might have to make those uh, flower bits into UV islands. Might have to make those flower bits into UV islands. You're talking about these bits through here. Which are these bits through here? Uh, yeah, you could, and I could. Um, I I'll undo it. We'll, we'll, we'll see what sort of result the other unwrap gives us, but I really think this is probably going to be the best result we're going to get, but we'll see. Uh, let's try uh, this one here, the pelt map. Again, that's 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 not bad. We'll double check it in a minute. We're getting a lot more stretching though happening toward the um, the base here. While we're getting a much nicer unwrap through the cone, the top of the cone, we are getting a lot of stretching happening down toward the base. Um, we could maybe. We could, could, could try doing... Well, we could do a split. A split might fix that. No. Um... Snipers so says to help forge Ryzen works well for complicated objects. Easy objects, not always. Yeah, that, that's what I found as well. That's well said, Sniper Girl, it does. For complicated objects, the program, the algorithms you, uh, do work quite well. For simple things, uh, it, it does tend, tend to have a problem, which is weird. Behold, it's Smurfberry. He is back. Um, yeah, Sniper Girl is saying no one will see the base. Is it that important? They actually will see the base here. Um, if we jump back into Max, you see it. They actually are going to see a lot of the base. So we do have to we do have to be careful there. It's not being hidden within this piece, which I think you probably thought it was. Oops. Um, so we do have to look at that. Now there's a couple of things we can do. We can try splitting the mesh, and we'll see if that fixes it. Euro says, WB Smurf Perry. Uh, Smurf Perry says, How far can I shove my face into the cone? <laughs> I don't know how big your face is, but you, I guess you can get it quite far into that cone. Um, Euro says, Depends if you can stand the music coming out of it, I guess, Smurf Perry. <laughs> Galen says, And how much help you want, Smurf Perry? That's all right. Uh, the couple of options. We can try. We can try splitting the mesh around the cone base, like which means we have a, a cut around the cone, which which I want to try and avoid. Uh, the other option is we can try splitting the mesh. So if I go here and I go all the way down to here, and we cut it. Now, now, and again, it's 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 sort of half fixed it, but not really. I'm just doing an optimize on the mesh here. the The button's probably hidden behind me, but there's a button that's called optimize, and what that will do is it will try and um, optimize the UV layout island as best it can automatically. I think that's probably the best we're going to get this cone. It's 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 a, a, a decent unwrap. We do have, like I said, a split running down the underside. 
but again I put it on the base so that it's not going to be noticeable in the game on the model it's going to be hidden uh, but I think that's probably the best we're going to get as far as trying to do an unwrap on this weird shaped piece of geometry Let's send that back to Max. Healthboard says, call me crazy, but I've always wanted to hear Slayer played on old timey's gramophone. <laughs> you want to hear Slayer on an old timey gramophone? <laughs> I don't think Slayer will be playing on the record in the game. I'm not actually, I, I have to speak to the guy doing the, comp the composing for the game to get him to come up with something to play on the record. Th this gramophone is actually going to be part of um, an interactive thing that you do to progress within the game. We'll work that out when we jump into the game. But uh, so yeah, we're going to actually have to play a record. So we'll play music. But I've got to get the composer to write something. I haven't told him yet. <laughs> uh, Galen says, could you use one section of the cone? I'm not sure what you mean, Galen. We, we got a pretty good unwrap going on it. We, we fix it up, most of it up. We do have, like I said, the seam that runs along the bottom. So we have a seam that's going to be running under here. But um, as you walk, walk around the model in the game, you're not going to notice that. So you're not even going to see that because this will be on a table. So unless you're looking up at it like this, which you're not going to be, you won't see the seam underneath of the cone. Sniper says to Hellforge TV, I wonder how that would sound. It's pretty cool. <laughs> So, and again, you see the back faces here are black. That's because there are no faces on the back. I've done that to reduce the poly count so that when we bring it into Unreal, all I have to do is create a two-sided material and that will fix that up for us. Um, but it might look a bit strange when we take it into Substance Painter in a minute now to do some texturing because it will be see-through on the back. Well, I believe it should be anyway. We'll see how we go. Uh, now, have I, have I UV mapped everything? I think I have. I'm just going to go through and check my um, my stack over here to see if I to make sure I've UV mapped everything up. Starting at the bottom and working our way up. So that's UV mapped. That's UV mapped. That's UV mapped. The turntable is UV mapped. The record is UV mapped. The little um, player headpiece here is UV mapped. UV mapped mapped, mapped, and mapped. I think we're good. I think we've done all of our UV mapping. I'm going to do a quick save here. And now before I do, I okay, now we're going to do an attach. We're going to attach everything together, but I'm not going to attach the record. I need that to stay separate because that's going to be um, an object you need to find in the game to put on the actual gramophone before you can play it. So the, uh, I'll leave it here for now, but it's not going to be part of what we're texturing up today, the actual record. I'm going to use the texture map for that. But everything else we need to attach now, so let's do that. So I'm just going to collapse my stack. And let's attach these pieces together. Now that's interesting. It should not be asking me for a material ID. I'll look at that in a minute. It should all be using the same material. The turntable. Uh, the back. The arm. The playhead. And the actual cone. Okay, now everything should be attached. And I'm just going to double check that by moving the model really quick. It is, just the records left behind, that's good. Uh, while we're here, let's just um, move our pivot point though. So that when we bring it into Unreal, it's just a bit easier for us to place. That should be good. Now we need to fix our UVs because all of our UVs will be overlapping. So I'm going to throw down an Unwrap UVW. And I'm going to get Max to do a repack. Just give Max a minute. Oh, 
Oh, I understand. Galen was saying you could use one section of the cone because the cone has sections that um, that repeat. That is true. But if I do that, um, when I start to texture it up in Substance Painter and I texture up one of those cones, all of those cones are going to use the same texture map. Um, and that can be okay, depending on how you texture it up. But sometimes, like, if we do, when we texture it up in, in Painter in a minute, if we, like, um, put some distressing, some wearing of the metal on one of those pieces, it's going to look the same on all of them, and that could look a bit odd. But you are right. If we, if, if we were careful, we could do that. That is an option. That would give us more texture space for the rest of the model as well. If we have, if we have overlapping UVs for the um, for the parts that are the same, and that that's a good way to actually optimize a model if you want to use a smaller texture resolution uh, and still have a nice looking texture is to overlap your UV. So that, that that's true. You could do that, but you have to be careful when you texture map if you do that. Euro says you'd have um, you'd have seam edges on pretty flat surface that stand out. Yeah, yeah, that's that's you, you, that may be a problem as well. That's true. But my more, my concern really would be for um, just for the fact that uh, the texture would repeat on all of those pieces. It would look the same. And if I want to do a bit of distressing, a bit of aging, and I want to look like knock a bit of the paint off of, around here, it's going to look the same on all of them. Uh, and if you were careful, you could do it. You could do it. I'm not saying you couldn't. You could. Uh, now we're going to do some vertex colouring. We're doing that so that we can texture up the different parts of this using one texture map, uh, but use different materials. So uh, now that we've packed our UVs, I'm going to collapse our stack. And I'm going to start texture mapping. So I want these pieces on the end to be wood, but I want them to be a different colour wood from the uh, box interior. So I'm going to make these ones a blue. Uh, then I want the box interior and these pieces here to be a different coloured wood. So I'm going to make these a red. And then we have this piece on the top, which I might make a different type of wood again. So let's make this a different colour and make it an aqua. Then we have the actual turntable. So we've got the outer edge, the inner edge. Oh, no, that's the record on top, okay. So we have the turntable and then the central spire, the, the bit that the record goes on. We'll make the turntable its own color. We'll make that, um, we'll make it a dark gray. And then we have the piece in the middle here that the record pops on top of to hold the record in place and we'll make that that's going to be a metallic silver probably so I don't know we'll make that like a yellowy color and then we have the rest of this now uh, actually let's stick to wood for the time being and we have this piece at the back which again will be wood and I want it to be the same color wood as the box so I'm going to Select both of those and make sure that they're the red color. And then we have the um, the rest of this, which I want it to be like a more a brassy color, but I want to make these uh, a little bit more interesting than just throwing the one material down. So I'm going to break these up a little bit. So that can be brass, that can be brass. That can be brass, one one type of uh, gold or brass. So let's make that, I don't know, let's make it like a, an orangey colour. And then I want this, 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 this and this to be a different brassy colour. I can't remember if I got that piece as well or not. Um, because I, I can't remember if I actually included that in this, I'm going to turn on um, vertex coloring. 
and I did. Okay, and that just shows me what I've done and what I haven't done. So let's make these uh, a different color. Let's make them, I don't know, let's make them a purple. They're going to be a brass. Okay, so basically anything that's white I haven't done and I've already seen that I forgot to, to add this one to these. So I'm going to just add that to that. Okay, I have to do the screws as well, but let's come back to that in a minute. So those are brass. This piece and this piece. I want it to be also a brass, but it will give it its own material color, just to be on the safe side. Uh, this piece through here, again, I want it to be brass, but a different material. So let's give it a different color. Let's make this one, I don't know, dark purple. And that leaves our main trumpet piece here. Oh, we've got this piece as well. Let's make this piece the same color as this piece. So let's choose that color. And then we have the main trumpet part at the end. Let's make that its own color. Let's go with, I don't know. Let's go with a dark, dark green. Oh, not black, dark green. And then we have the uh, the rim around the edge. Let's make that its own material as well. We'll make it nice and contrasty. Uh, let's go with, um, I don't know, pink, <laughs> I guess. No, hang on. Yes, pink for that one. And for this one, it changed the color on me. Naughty. Let's go with that really dark green again. Okay, and now that just leaves the two screws around the back here. Uh, and, oh, and the handle, I forgot the handle as well. Okay. Let's start with the two screws. They can stay white. And the handle... Uh, this part of the handle, I want it to, to be like a, a plastic material so let's make it its own color I'm starting to run out of colors here uh, and this piece and this piece they can stay the same material and let's make them uh, let's make them a mid gray now we should have everything textured up uh, vertex colored up I'm just going to check to make sure that my design decisions here are correct and we'll look okay. Okay, so that's one wood, that's another wood, that's another wood. That's They're all brass, but different materials. And then we've got the air. Yeah, that should be good. I think we should be good. So let's turn off vertex coloring so it just gets in the way otherwise. Let's do a quick save. Let's export the model into our gramophone folder. Let's jump into Substance Painter. Create a new project. Load up the model we just exported. Uh, make sure we turn compute tangent space on. Okay, now yeah, you see it's it, it's um, see through on the back again because I've removed the polys on the back bases to reduce the poly count on that cone. Uh, but let's do a bake out of our maps, our curvature, and all that sort of stuff using the low poly as the high poly. Why do I have two materials here? This is not correct. So I'm just going to have to jump back into Max before I do this. Uh, we should only have one material. So I'm just going to make sure that we are only using one material by just reassigning the material here. I'm just going to call it uh, gramophone. Gramophobe, no, I want gramophone. 
Uh, just re explode it again. Back into Painter, let's update our project configuration and reload the model. Now, okay, what I'm going to do is do this new, just simply because it's left these um, old ones here and I don't like that. So I'm just going to go new. We didn't do anything, so we didn't lose any work. Just reload Gramophone. Discard. Now we've only got the one material, which is what we want. Uh, let's do our bake out. And 2K. Using the highs as the low. Good. All right, let's jump into the smart materials I've already created for the furniture and the uh, different bits and pieces inside the game. I'm going to start with this wood. We're going to assign a color selection for the wood and we're going to make that this part of the wood. Let's find another smart material. Um, I want a darker wood. I want contrast. Let's see what this one looks like. No, I don't like that. Let's see what this one looks like. No, I don't like that either. Picky feel. Let's try this one. And don't mind this one. We'll see what we can do with this one. Let's um, assign it color selection to the blue. I'm just going to look at the... Um, I'm just going to play around a little bit with the um, the masks. So I'm going to start with the interior here. I want to pull this up a little bit more. Pull back on the contrast a little bit. We're going to be throwing an overall dirt layer on this as well uh, anyway, so we're going to layer it up a little bit more. Just going to look at the edge wear. Pull that back. Triplanar is on, that's good. The grunge amount, pull that back. Grunge scale, edge smoothness, ambient occlusion, and pull that back. And our curvature, might just pull that back a little bit. Uh, let's jump to the bits on the outside now. Let's pull back on the contrast a bit. Maybe pull back a little on the triplanar blending. I'm going to throw another smart mask down here. Um, so let's see, what have we got here? Let's go with, uh, let's try this dirt soft edges. Let's 
Yeah, no, I don't like that mask. I'm going to get rid of it. I don't like the sharpened mask either. I'm going to remove that. Let's pay a bit more attention now to the inner box part. I just want to make a couple of corrections there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color of the underlying wood. Just going to darken it up a little bit. Not quite that much. It was just a bit too bright, a bit too, a bit too yellow. We might, we'll come back to this in a minute, but let's move to the wood piece at the top. Back into our smart materials. Android Lust says, hey, hey Android Lust, how are you? And I forgot to show your pictures yesterday. Remind me before I sign off today, Android Lust, because I want to show those images that you um, popped into the Discord server, particularly the waiter, because I love the waiter. And I forgot, I'm sorry yesterday, but I will do it today. I will, before I sign off. But it's good to see you, buddy. It's all fine. I know you're. You're. I know you say it's all fine. You're pretty laid back. You let me get away with too much Android lust. I will show it today. And I am sorry for not doing it yesterday because I just completely forgot. And I'm just looking for another, another material we can use for that top piece. Um. Let's have a look at this one. We get a mask with color selection to the top piece of wood. No, I don't mind that. I like the uh, the red contrasting with the chocolate. And remember, most of most of the furniture in our building is uh, cherry wood and chocolate wood, so we're keeping a theme going. The time slipped by, and you again, Android Lust. <laughs> okay, let's keep going here. And now I'm, I'm pretty sure I don't actually have uh, a material, a smart material already created I can use for the um, for the turntable. I don't think. I don't think there's anything I've made that. I could use. No, let's look at our materials and see what we might be able to come up with. Um, got to be something here. Let's have a look at the industrial rubber. Again, let's mask it with color selection. I'm just, I can't remember. Who plays records anymore? Look, I know records have made a resurgence because you know everything old is new again. Um, and people are playing cassette tapes and still playing records and buying records. But I don't have a turntable. Everything I do is digital. What are turntables made out of? I'm assuming it's some sort of rubber. Am I correct or am I incorrect? Does anyone know? <laughs> Who plays records anymore? Uh, because I don't have a turntable, yeah, I just, I'm not really sure. I'm not sure. Anyway, we'll say rubber. Uh, turntables have a rubber on top for friction. Turntable itself is usually pressed metal. Oh, okay. I see. All right. Well, we can say that, how, how, 
how detailed do I want to get here? I could break this up into another texture so we could have a metal around the outside and we could have this rubber interior. Wait, who stopped playing records? <laughs> you still play records. Look, it is, it's very trendy still. Like, you know, the hipsters, they still play, they still have records, like buying records. I don't know. I don't, I don't get it. Uh, I'm going to jump back into Max and think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to break the turntable up a little bit. Oh, if I can. Not sure if I can. Let's see. Oh, yes, no, I can. It'll be good. It'll be good. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into this mode and I'm going to select that. We don't want that. And I'm just going to make this a separate color again, something a bit different. Let's make it, um, I don't know, let's make it this really light pink. Like that. Uh, now I'm just going to update the model again by exporting it. And update the project in... Actually, let's do a quick save here because, you know, you never know. Uh, just in case. Jump back into Gramophone. Let's uh, update the project. Reload the model. We're going to have to rebake our maps. Android Lost says, I wish I had a record player. Euro says, I can't find any pics of any without a record. Yeah, I know. That's the problem. I can't find any. We'll do it this way. We're, we're, we're going to use some artistic direction and decision. And we're going to say the uh, the top will be a, a rubber and the outside will be a metal. So let's find a metal. Sometimes if you can't get uh, reference material, you just got to use your best judgment. My phone's going off in the background. My apologies for that, guys. Gold is a metal. It is. But do we really want it to be gold or do we want it to be a silver? Gold or silver? Let's have a look at, um, we've got a couple of pewters and stuff here. Let's have a look at this one. We'll do a bit of a mix. Yeah, I don't don't like that uh, that texture. Let's have a look at this one. Actually, let's go back to the one. Uh, let's do a color a mask with color selection. Okay, now it is it is a silver, but it's just reflecting the HDRI map. That's why it looks a bit weird, or why it's hard to see because it's very shiny. So let's knock that back with mixing in. Um, let's mix in. Have a look at this one. Again, let's mask it with color selection. Uh, let's just look at the scaling a little bit. It's very hard to even see that, uh, that it's there. And, and we are getting that line there. That's actually where the join is in the UV map. Let's see if we can find something else. Got to be something here. I'm just looking for another metal I can mix in that I like the look of.
Let's have a look at the stainless steel. I wasn't going to go gold. Let's try to work out. Well, maybe, maybe a gold. If we do, if we mix the gold and the silver, let's put these into their own group. And again, we're going to mask with color selection to make sure it stays just there. And let's throw down a smart mask. And let's go with the surface warm on the gold. Play with that balance a little bit. I really should check my phone. I don't know. <laughs> it was probably work. It's over on the table. I don't bring it with me while I'm streaming. Oh, they can wait. They can wait. Maybe like that. We shouldn't get too carried away, I guess. Just, just so we can tell that it's different to the bit on top. That's really what I was going for. Uh, but what I want to do, I do want to make the top a little bit more multicolored so I'm going to jump back to where that is which is this one I believe yeah oh no 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 why are they okay I know why I know why it's okay it's cool it's good uh, let's just look at our 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 color selection here and pull the tolerance back a bit there we go Gold is metal, that's right, Android loves his phones are such a distraction. I know they are, aren't they? They are a distraction. Um, I'm going to move this, which is that rubber on the top, just to the top of our stack here. It'll just make it easier for me to work with. Um, just checking what options I have here with that uh, texture. Okay, I'm going to duplicate the layer. And we're just going to make a couple of adjustments to the duplicate. One of them being I'm going to lighten it up a little bit. I'm also going to take a little bit of the color out of it. What else do we have here? Gonna pull back on the damage. Maybe pull a lot a little on the roughness. I'm just gonna change the random seed value as well. Uh, the dirt layer for this. I might just pull it back a little. And then the height. No, the height should be alright. Um, we're going to group both these together. We're going to mask with color selection again on the group. Again, we're going to make sure that our tolerance is turned down. And we're going to do a smart mask. Um, well, again, we're going to use surface worn do a mix between the two so that we just have a bit more interest on that um, on that rubber wasn't it was looking a bit flat okay let's move on to the rest of this now because I'm determined to get this done today to get this um, textured up and finished today but if you do have any questions please feel free to pop in and ask it's okay Okay, let's work on the uh, the rest of this now. So I'm going to jump into our uh, smart materials again. And I'm going to use... Uh, 
Let's see what this one's like. Just before I do that though, because we've got a, quite a few layers going on now, I'm just going to do a quick save. And I want to see what this looks like. And again, let's mask it with color selection to that part of the model. Okay. Just going to play with the scaling a little bit. I'm going to turn off the height information, or am I? I won't turn it off, but I might knock it back. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to work out what's going on here. Oh, okay. I, I, I'm going confusing myself. Um, all right. I'm going to duplicate this layer. And in the duplicate, I'm just going to make a color correct, a color change on the actual metal. I'm just going to darken it up a little bit. I'm going to group both of these two together. Uh, again, we're going to throw down a smart mask. Um, again, let's make sure we mask with color selection. I'm going to turn off the height information on the one above, so this one. Did I throw the mask down? I can't find it. Yes, I did. Okay. Let's play with the mask a little bit. I'm going to darken this up a little bit more. come back to this in a minute. I want to move to the actual uh, cone part at the end. Let's throw it down. Let's have a look at this gold. Again, I'm just going to do a quick save because I don't trust the program not to crash. Uh, again, let's mask with color selection. <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me, with color selection. We got quite a few layers going on here now. Uh, Snappy Girl says, paint a crash? No, never, I know. <laughs> There's nothing worse than if you spend half an hour or two hours doing some texturing and then have paint a crash on you. As you guys have seen has happened. Uh, generally it's not too bad. It's when it starts to get really complicated. Well, when you start to get a lot of layers going on, that's that's when painter can start to crash. Uh, let's put both of these in their own group. And I like to layer upon layer upon layer. 
And again, let's mask with color selection. Uh, let's throw down a smart mask. And for this one, let's go with... Let me just see what this stains and scratches looks like. We just want a little bit of that green tarnishing to come in. We don't want to do, we don't want to overdo it. No problem, Sniper Echo. You have to shoot off. I'll catch you next week. I'll be live again on Monday next week, as you know. You have a good weekend, Sniper. Thanks for being here. Uh, let's choose something for this ring around the outside here. Let's go with... Um, let's go with... Let's see what this one looks like. I'm just going to do a quick save here. Um, we want that to be a mask with color selection. Trying to work out. I, I like the pattern it gave us on the inside. So I'm just going to add another color. What I might do here, I think, is I might move that into this grouping. Again, I'm just going to make sure that the color selection is also including that. And we're going to throw down another smart mask. Let's go with the surface warm. No, I don't I don't want the surface warm. I want I want I want I want. Try the dirt soft edges. No, I don't want that one. Let's try. Hmm. Let's try the dust soft edges. No, that's not really going to do it for me either. Let's try uh, Edges Strong Scratch.
let's also throw down Try the stains and scratches one. I might do on this layer as well I might I might just pull that back a little bit in the blending Let's move back to these pieces at the back here now. Jump back into our smart materials. Let's go with, uh, let's do a quick save, just to be sure. Let's go with Well, look at this. Mask with color selection again. And then let's go with Looking good, thanks. Um, and then let's go with um, let's have a look at this one. Again, I'm going to mask with color selection. And then for the final bits and pieces here, let's go with um, let's go with something like a bronze, a shiny bronze. Again, let's just do a quick save here to make sure that nothing happens. Got this bronze yellow. Since instead of a bronze, let's go with the silver. Maybe something like we have a pure iron. We have a brushed iron. We've got a damaged iron. Hmm. Damaged iron, perhaps, Sniper Echo says. Maybe. 
I'll just have a quick look through here and see if there's anything else that might be cool. We could go with a pewter. Yeah, I don't like the uh, damage in the pewter though. We could possibly knock it back inside of the um, material. We have a silver as well, a pure silver. Let's see what the pure silver looks like. Yeah, no, I don't like that. We've got titanium, let's see what that looks like. No, I don't really like that either. Let's try the brush titanium. We just mask with color selection so that we can get a better idea of what's going on. Too many names that start with an S, Landry Lust says yes. No, I didn't call him Sniper Echo. I said, no, did I? <laughs> Hopefully not. Look, I get confused with the S's. My apologies, Smokeberry, if I called you Sniper. <laughs> I probably did because I've done it before. You guys know I've done it before. Uh, the handle, let's look at the handle real quick. And again, the handle we want to be a, a silver, I think. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another color for that. But we do want the handle to be a black plastic, I think, so. Did they have plastic back in the 1930s? Is plastic around then or is that something that's new? I don't know. Was plastic around in the 1930s? Yeah, you did say sniper ego, sniper, sniper girl says. <laughs> um, he called smurfery sniper ego. <laughs> I do know. Euro says, don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they had plastic back in the 1930s or not. Anyway, let's go with this steel brush because it looks quite black. Uh, and let's uh, assign the color selection to the handle. Uh, I just I want to darken up that that turntable. It's just a bit too bright. Uh, let, let me do the handle first. I'm getting I'm getting distracted by all the shiny things. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to duplicate this. No, might have been either uh, Bakelite or similar. Yeah, th th this reminds me of Bakelite, but it's not actually. It's meant to be uh, dark iron, but it looks like a bit of a Bakelite. So it should work for what we want. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure plastic was not around in the 1930s. I think that's a relatively recent invention. Plastic. Or might have been ivory, Euro says. True, Sniper Girl says methods of making plastic were, in, were, were invented in 1907. Oh, well, there you go. But was it in production uh, in the 1930s? Like, could you buy things like your gramophone here with plastic? Anyway. Something to research and find out. Or just plain wood. Yeah, plain wood would work as well. Android Lust says plastic was probably around. It was branded the wonderful material, but now <laughs> now it's terrible for the environment and we hate it. We, we can't keep... We, it's everywhere. It's like I'm looking at two monitors here that are, have a, blast, a plastic frame around them. Everything that we make now is plastic. Plastic, plastic. If we were to get rid of it, we'd be in trouble. A smokery says, if only there was vast source of human knowledge that we could connect to, like a network. <laughs> oh, shut up, smokery. <laughs> Smart ass. Um, I'm going to come back to this handle here. I want to... I want to do a bit of a mix with... with uh, steel rust. So, just before I do that, I'm going to move the handle to the top. I'm going to do a quick save. Uh, now I'm going to throw down 
it's more of a rusted metal. Again, let's mask to color selection. Come on. Uh, let's group these two. Mask with color selection again. And let's throw down a smart mask. And we're going to go with the surface worn again. I just wanted a bit more interest on that handle. It's just looking a bit too plain. I won't get too carried away with it. Uh, but I do want to darken up this turntable. I just think it's a bit too white. I'm just going to move that up to the top as well. So I'm just going to find where our turntable is. That's it there. Hang on, hang on, what's going on here? I'm getting confused. Okay, that's the wrong one. It's this one here, I believe. Yeah. So it's a mixing these two together. Oh, it's the edge. Phil is getting confused. Phil is trying to work out which one is which. What is that? Oh, okay. That's those ones. So it's this one. No, it's this one. Yes. Oh, I see. It's because I've added it to both. <laughs> All right. I know. I see what's going on here. Sniper Girl says confused. Bill does 3D. Not surprising considering your age. <laughs> That's right. I'm such an old man. I'm just trying to work out what. Okay. Well, I'm going to darken this metal up a little bit, I think. It's this layer here. I think I got a bit carried away with um, with lightening it up. So I'm just going to again. I got to find the right layer. It's this layer using this material. With this mask. Material. 
this color uniform color. Android Lost says, don't forget, I feel rude for him. Oh yes, yes, no, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do a quick save here. Uh, we're pretty much done. The, the, the color at the top of that, I'm, I'm being pedantic here about wanting to change the color. All I was going to do is make it a little darker. We can call our gramophone done, I think. Uh, so let's just yeah, again save it and let's have a look at the um, images that Android Lust. Thank you for reminding me, Android Lust. Android Lust posted in the gallery because they look cool. So I'm just going to copy the link for the first one and again join the Pearl 3D Discord server if you haven't already and you can check these out as well to your heart's content or you can post your own. And I'm just going to copy the second link in and then we'll go back and look at that one. I love the fact that you make them nice and big, the resolution uh, Android Lust, so I don't have to scale them up. She looks great too. Really good. I love the texturing. Love the texturing. Yeah, nice work. Great model and really nice. You always do really nice texturing and I love the style of the stuff that you make. Smurfberry says, uh, Snappy Girl says, liking her. Smurfberry says, she looks like she would be a villain in Borderlands. Um, I've been watching a bit of Westworld recently. She reminds me of somebody who be, might be in, in Westworld because a lot of the women in that show, season three, dress very corporate and very modern. I, I, that's the instantly I thought Westworld when I saw her, even though Westworld is not stylized. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. But yes, a villain in Borderlands, that's a good description, Smurf. Very Android Lust says, first time I decided to make a good resolution. Yeah, no, it looks great. Love it. And I can see all the texture detail as well, like uh, the, the detailing of the materials that you've used for the texture. It looks great. Really nice, nice model, nice silhouette and beautiful texturing. Android Lust says, I've never seen Westworld. Uh, season 1 and 2 were good. Season 3, I'm not that, not that impressed with Season 3. But 1 and 2, I like 1 and 2. Android Lust says, actually, she could be in Westworld. She's an actor who played in the 100. Ah, I never saw Westworld. Smurfery says, corporate is a good name for that aesthetic. Yes. Uh, this I love this model. Uh, the other one is great as well. Don't get me wrong, but I love this. I think this is amazing. I love it. I love the design. I love the texturing. I love the silhouette. Um, you've just done a great job here. It's a beautiful model because Android Lust does a lot of this stylized type work, and it's it's beautifully done. This is love it. My favorite. I think of everything you've shown me probably so far, I mean, you've shown me a lot of great work, but I love this model. And I love the work you've done in texturing it up as well. It looks really good. Really good. Yeah, the art style is great as well. Uh, Sniper Girl says she loves the art style. Yeah, I do too. It reminds me a little bit of... Um, you know, the Little Sisters, the, the Rapture, what was that video game called again? Bioshock. Uh, he, he, he reminds me like of a character that might be in Bioshock, the remake of Bioshock, Bioshock Infinite, I think it was, where the city was in the clouds. But I don't know why, I just, yeah, but anyway, I love the model. I think it looks really good. The concept made you want to do the model? I'm not surprised. It looks the concept is great, but you've done a beautiful job modeling and texturing it as well. Really nice job. Long arms, skinny legs, loved it. Yeah, no, it does. It looks really good. Even down to his little striped socks here. No, it does. It looks, which are hidden behind my banner at the moment. It looks great. Beautiful work. Love the model. Love the texturing. You must have an awesome, awesome looking portfolio by now, um, Android Lust. And thank you for letting me show them on stream as well. But I think we might leave it there for today, guys and girls. 
Uh, I do want to thank you all though very much for hanging out with me and for watching. We finished the gramophone, that was the important thing. My, my thing for today was I had to get that finished, textured up and finished, which we did. So when we come back next week, we'll pick another asset to start working on and texturing up all the study. Um, you guys and girls though, make sure you stay safe, stay healthy and happy. Social distancing, remember, if you're in one of those lockdown states, which most of us are now. Um, I will be back again, of course, on Monday at 5 p.m. Pacific time in the United States for our next stream. We'll pick up where we left off and choose another asset and start texturing it up and UV mapping it. You guys and girls, though, have a great weekend. Thanks very much for hanging out and being here with me. Um, I will see you all again on Monday next week. You guys take care. See you.